What's going on everybody? My name is Tuck and welcome to my MW2 beta open discussion on stuff that I would like to see change, just want to get off my chest, or just some thoughts I had about the beta overall and what I expect or what I would like to see going into the full release of the game. Like I mentioned, this is an open discussion. The comment section is down below. Feel free to put whatever you want down there in the comment section. If you agree with me, disagree with me, it does not matter. It's your opinion. I'm not going to get upset by you having a different opinion or the same opinion as me for that matter. For whatever it matters, there is gameplay in the background, but it is not necessarily necessarily a good gameplay it's not necessarily a bad gameplay it is there in the background just for you guys to have something to watch if you want to watch something or you can just listen to this like a podcast if you so choose whichever you do doesn't matter to me so let's hop into it and we'll start off by just getting all the stuff that everybody has been regurgitating on social media out of the way so we don't even have to talk about it. Number one, no red dots on the minimap. Everybody hates it, we want red dots. I understand that, it's a problem in my opinion. Number two, footstep audio. While they've said they're going to reduce the footstep audio, I still think it's entirely too loud. I think the game in general is just insanely loud. Along with a lot of other weapon balancing and updates and stuff like that, I think they need to tune their audio a little bit. The audio in this game is super whack. And then number three, the skill-based matchmaking. I personally don't really care about the skill-based matchmaking because if I play pubs, I'm just there to vibe. I'm not really paying attention to what's going on and I primarily play competitive where there's always skill-based matchmaking. So me personally, I understand why skill-based matchmaking would be annoying to the average person, but for me, I just personally don't really care. And then four, they actually fixed this one, I'm pretty sure, the disbanding lobbies thing. I think they addressed that and said they were going to change that so lobbies didn't disband, so we'll get a W in the chat for that one. But those are the main four things that I have seen on social media that are just regurgitated by everybody. We're just going to address those now and not talk about them again. And now let's hop into some stuff that I am concerned about. Primarily as a competitive player, my opinions are going to vary differently from a lot of other people, but whenever I think about things, I think about things like super duper objectively and like is something bad or is something just straight up good or is it not really a factor? Some things that I think that are just objectively bad, I don't really like the perk system. I don't think it's bad per se, but at the same time it's really convoluted. It's not necessary. I don't understand why we're trying to re invent the wheel of the perk system when we literally basically perfected it in like 2007. That's a problem that a lot of COD devs have is that they get the feedback every year that oh Call of Duty is the same game every year so every year they try to do new stuff and it just sometimes misses or it's just not necessary. Like in World War II whenever they made the division system that wasn't necessarily bad but what was the point? I think pick 10 is the best system we can have for a COD game, but unfortunately we're probably never going to see pick 10 again outside of a Treyarch game. So the class building system is just the first thing that I'm going to mention. I don't necessarily think it's the biggest problem. I think the biggest problem in the entire game is just the visibility issue. It is very, very, very hard to see certain things at certain points in time. The enemies not having nameplates, I think that's just a straight up mistake. I think the enemies have to have nameplates. If you don't want the enemies to have nameplates, the hardcore mode exists. For core mode and then competitive, we need nameplates. Because on top of not having nameplates, the view kick for the weapons is kind of absurd. The muzzle flash and the smoke effects on screen at all times are kind of absurd. Whenever there are kill streaks called in, you basically can't see anything on the map. It's like someone's smoked off in Valorant. So the one thing that I'm going to preach and pray that they try to change something about before full release is the visibility, because I think that is just the biggest issue. But at the same time, this game is not made for people like me. It's not made for people that want to try and win and sweat like that. It's made for the casual player. And ultimately, I guess not having nameplates really benefits the casual player because, I mean, I can't see them. So it makes the playing field really even at that point, which is a really bad way to look at it. It's really unfortunate for me and other players like myself, but I would like to see it changed. Am I hopeful? it will change. They might make some changes, but I don't think we're going to get back to like what I want specifically. I think Vanguard honestly did the vision thing pretty well, except for like, the, you know, seeing people through walls thing. And then kind of circling back to my first point about things that are just unnecessary. The example that comes to mind is the dead silence, like having like an ultimate ability scream, like an Overwatch, whenever you pop your ultimate, your character has a voice line. I don't understand why we're doing that for like dead silence. Like, why are we letting people know that we're popping dead silence? That seems kind of counter intuitive. Just a lot of decisions that are being made in this game to cater towards casuals, which again, that was never a secret that was going to happen, but at the same time, the decisions just kind of don't make sense. I don't want to harp on that talking point too much because it's just going to be a reoccurring thing and we're just going to be saying the same thing for 10 minutes, but like at the same time, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Those were some of my immediate talking points and red flags that I wanted to address. The next talking point I guess we can move on to is the maps. Now granted, this in the weapon balance is going to be a little bit of a limited discussion because, I mean, we had four maps in the beta. 
Yeah. At least in the normal quick play hard point search and destroy rotation, I didn't play Invasion or anything like that. Of the four maps that we had available to us in the beta, Mercado Las Almas, the museum map, Farm 18, and then Breenberg Hotel, I don't think any of the maps are necessarily poorly designed. I just don't think the spawn system works with some of them, and I think the museum map is just way too big for 6v6. It's always going to be tough to determine how well a map actually is designed because the squad spawn system that we use from MW2019's engine and Vanguard's engine just, just doesn't really work well for respawn game modes. The spawn systems for squad spawns are always going to be dumb, so it's really hard to judge a map based around that. I think Mercado Las Almas is going to be a fun pub map. It's going to get you a lot of interactions. You're just going to run into non-stop gunfights. I think Breenberg Hotel is a well-designed map, but there's a lot of power positions and the spawn points kind of force you into choke points on that, especially in hard point. The museum map, like I said, just too damn big. It might be really good for search and destroy. It might be really good for like ground war and bigger game modes, but for 6v6 in the beta, I'll pass, man. I left that game so many times. And then Farm 18, I also think is a really weird case study because I think it's a well-designed map on paper, but there's one hard point that's just kind of off in the middle of nowhere, which really disrupts the flow of the map. And then the spawn systems don't really work on well on the map either because you'll just spawn on one corner of the map and then it's a square map. So you're just kind of going in a circle and you just go really awkward amounts of times on that map without seeing enemies because you're just literally going around each other like a clock with hands on opposite ends of the spectrum. A lot of these issues could be solved with just simple spawn tweaks, but they're not going to do that because I don't think they know how. I'm still convinced that whoever coded the spawns in MW 2019 was laid off from the company and they just never bothered to either get those people back or they just never bothered to learn how the spawn systems work to their full potential because there are some spawns in this game, MW 2019 Vanguard, whatever the game may be that uses this spawn system that just make no sense and you cannot tell me why they're happening in a logical way. It's also worth noting that I only played TDM, Domination, and Hardpoint during the beta. I wanted to play Search, didn't really get around to it, so I have no idea how the maps play for Search. I'm assuming they'll play decently because like I said, I think they are well-designed maps, but at the same time, the spawn systems are kind of what ruins them, so maybe in a no-respawn game mode, the maps will work great. We'll see. I'm actually kind of hopeful for that. I also haven't really seen too much on the other maps that are going to be in the game, so I'm hoping they kind of don't suck, because I've been very adamant about this on Twitter and other places. If the game is mid, as mid can be, as long as the game doesn't suck, as long as it's not a bad game, we'll have a good year as a competitive squad. Because competitively using this next talking point as a segue weapon balance, I don't think the weapon balancing in this game is bad at all. Again, super limited from the beta, some weapons didn't even give us weapon attachments to try out and use. I used a lot of different guns in the beta, and the only gun I objectively felt physically ill using, I was like, this gun is gonna suck, is the Lockman 556. And even then, I still had fun with it at some points. Obviously, there's gonna be meta weapons, because that's just how video games work. The AK-47 is always gonna be meta in CSGO. Vandal, I think, is gonna always be meta in Valorant. I don't play Valorant. If that's not the AR, I apologize. But every game is always going to have meta guns, and I think in this game, if nothing changes between now and the full release of the game, the M4, the SCAR, and the MP5 are just gonna be the three meta guns. We're just gonna have to deal with that. It's expected. But with that said, I did use a lot of other guns in the beta, and I, I was competitive with basically every gun I picked up, except for, like I said, the Lockman. 5.56. So ultimately, I don't really think the weapon balance in this game is bad at all. I think it'll be really fun for pubs. I think the competitive meta will be different. This might be the first time in a long time where we've had three meta guns in a 4v4 competitive COD. Like I said, the MP5, the SCAR, and the M4. Piggybacking off of this though, I do think the way you level up weapons and unlock new weapons is kind of stupid. I'm not really a fan, especially whenever I was trying to unlock the MP5 going from the Lockman 7.62, which was a single shot battle rifle, to the 5.56, which is an AR that basically does no damage then to the MP5, I thought that was stupid. I had so little fun doing that. But at the same time, I guess that's kind of a developer standpoint because that means you have to use other guns to get the gun you want. So from a developer standpoint, it's kind of a W on their part. It's a big brain thought process. But from a player standpoint, I would rather just not do that. Just let me level up and unlock guns like we've been doing since 2007 again. We're just trying to reinvent the wheel and I don't think it's necessary. But at the same time, does it hurt anything? I guess not. I'm curious to see what snipers are going to be like with actual attachments because the SIG 50 in the beta wasn't that bad. It's just really slow, but at the same time, we've just kind of accustomed to that. And then sidearms are terrible, again, which I expected because this is basically just a reskin 2019 game, and the sidearms in that game were also pretty, pretty bad. And then we've covered all the prerequisites, which I think we can finally move into my neck of the woods, esports, competitive CDL stuff. I'm assuming going into the full game, 
two of the game modes we're going to be playing are going to be Hardpoint and Search and Destroy. If they're not those two game modes, I would just be shocked. The third game mode is kind of what I'm curious slash worried about because there's been a leak that there was a CDL domination tab in the beta files and like let's not panic about that because it was in Vanguard 2. We obviously did not play domination for Vanguard competitively. At the same time, I haven't really seen anything else. I don't think Control has been found anywhere in the game files and I think CTF has been mentioned a few times. I don't think CTF in this game would play poorly. I would rather play CTF than Domination because Domination is one of those game modes which is just not really competitive in the slightest to be honest. Having a game mode where the game can be mathematically impossible for somebody to win at halftime, that ain't competitive bro. It's not, it's not fun. It's not fun to watch. It's not fun to play. It's really bad for COD Esports in my opinion to have Domination as a third game mode. I'm also kind of sick of Control because Control is either, it's really hit or miss. It worked really well in BO4. It was tolerable in Cold War. It sucks in Vanguard. So I'm really crossing my fingers and hoping that the third game mode in MW2 is either going to be CTF or even Blitz. I'll take Blitz. Blitz would probably work really well for MW2's movement. And then I also saw on Twitter that CDL Intel leaked the private match information for settings you can turn off and on. So there can be mini map pings in competitive and other stuff like that. I don't have the entire list in front of me, but there are options to turn stuff on and off that would be more competitive in private matches. So I'm assuming those settings are default going to be applied to the CDL game modes. And if that's the case, I don't really have a lot to say because those settings just need to be turned on or off for competitive. Which brings us to the actual season and ranked play. There apparently is an event for CDL like a month after release, and I'm really hoping that they have a ranked play style game mode ready to go with that event, or at least some point really soon after full release of the game because it needs to happen that way. If they just copy and paste Vanguard's rank system, I'm not gonna be upset. The only thing I will say about that is that the glitches that Vanguard had where you just lost SR for no reason, did not get SR for wins, and then some of the little quirky things were like, you would lose SR for teammates leaving and stuff like that. That needs changed. But if the base concept of Vanguard's win game, get SR, lose game, lose SR just carries over, I won't be upset. I'll be happy with that. Like I said earlier, if the game is average, I'm going to be fine. We're going to be fine as content creators. We're going to be fine as an esport. But if the game is bad, we're screwed for two years. And that is not a fun thought. Other than the obvious like little bug fixes, like the scan repair thing, that's probably going to be fixed. The little animation glitches, that's probably going to be fixed by full release too. Because those are like the finishing touches that every developer fixes before full release. So I'm not worried about those things but like I said this is an open discussion if you want to comment on something I said or think I missed something that is really important the comment section is down below if there's any gameplay left I'm gonna let it run its course if there's no gameplay left the video is going to end if you guys like the video or want to support the channel just leave a like on the video share the video with a friend subscribe if you're new to the channel don't be afraid to let me hear your thoughts in the comment section boys and girls I hope you have a great day after this video ends a pizza